Uh, let's talk to Matt Porter, who's uh, from Matt Porter Web Design, our resident gadget man. Good morning to you, Matt. Good morning. Um, these things uh, have uh, not gone away in some households, clearly by the sounds of things, but um, they are about 50,000 cassette albums. And that, that's quite, quite a lot. It is quite a lot. There have been um, attempts to do special edition releases of um, different um, albums from sort of 20 year anniversary releases and things like that. And in the process of doing that, there have been a special cassettes being released at the same time with additional tracks and things like that. So sort of quirky collectibles would kind of um, take up a little bit of that market, I think. Um, of course, w- many of us still have um, cassette players in our cars because um, it's much more difficult to change those kind of things out. So if you buy a second-hand car or something like that, then you might find there's a cassette player in there. So there may be some use. Um, and also there's it's it's trendy, you know, that, that having a, um, a a Walkman or a Sony Walkman or something like that, you know, cassette player, um, is trendy as well. So people are finding these in in um, secondhand shops and car boot sales, and 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 obviously in order to use them, they have to have the cassettes to play as well. So there's kind of multiple reasons, I guess. Oh, you've just reminded me of a moment I had when I used to run my disco back in the 1980s, and I I did a disco for the Ipswich Divorced and Separated Club, and uh, there was. One, there was one. There was one gentleman. It was a good night. Uh, there was one gentleman who clearly didn't appreciate uh, what I was doing because he actually walked around with his Sony Walkman on, strapped to his belt with his headphones on, playing his own cassettes, <laughs> dancing on the dance floor while everybody else was dancing uh, to what I was playing. And I, I kind of guess that's probably why he ended up at the Divorce and Separated Club. I don't he know. Was, right. Did he have the orange headphones? <laughs> he certainly he did. Had orange foam headphones, didn't they? Um, Happy days. Yeah, th- yeah, they were, they were, it was a good format and it was very useful for someone like when I was a teenager at the time and we'd be recording tracks off the radio yeah. or making our own albums, compilations and things like that. Um, it was also a bit of a pain because if you wanted to find a favourite track, you'd be spending you know, a couple of minutes fast forwarding all the way through an album yeah. or fast or rewinding all the way back. And of course you had the issue with having to stick the pencil through there to, to re um, tension the tape because um, a lot of the time, if you played the same track, it would, it would cause the whole thing to t- uh, become too tight and you can end up stretching the tape itself and then it would be all distorted. So um, yeah, it was a bit of a, mm. bit of a, bit of a, a farce really but the excitement Sometimes. the excitement though matt at christmas when you unwrapped your christmas presents and you had some blank cassette tapes to record on yeah that's <gasps> right yeah tapes. And then, then, of course, we had these different versions of uh, recording uh, technology. So if you were lucky enough to have an expensive personal stereo, you might have the metal position on there. So you could, so if you had recorded your um, vinyl onto a metal um, uh, tape, then you could switch it over there and you'd get better quality sound reproduction. And there was also Dolby as well. You could have mm. Dolby. So there were all these different versions that, you, you know, the more expensive you went for, the higher quality theoretically you got. There was well, I, um, I did a, an online search this morning to uh, find some images for my Facebook page, and it really took me back. So if you've got a couple of minutes to spare, just uh, pop into your favourite search engine, Cassette Tape, and see the yeah. lovely images that come up there of uh, Memorex and TDK and yeah. Scotch and all of those names yeah, that we that's remember right, so all well. Those names. Yeah. I think there's still one brand still makes them, um, but I think it's only one now, and they're mm. limited. I think it's Germany they're made in. So a factory in Germany makes them. And, and, the, and the other news today from this, I mean, we, we've picked up on the cassette sales going up, CD sales down. Streaming is, is, is the way forward now, streaming and downloading. But you don't actually kind of physically own anything, do you? That's the thing. You just, it's just kind of there. You've got nothing tangible. No, you haven't, especially with the streaming services where you're paying a monthly fee. And I do that. You know, I pay, I pay um, uh, one of the services to, to, to have unlimited streaming. But you're right. You, you have a problem unless you have access to a data connection. You have problems trying to play those tracks without either a data connection or a mobile phone. You can't transfer them onto anything else easily anyway. So, um, yeah, you, you, you're not uh, owning the music anymore. And arguably, if you speak to many of the artists, they're not getting paid a great deal either for each of the streams. Mm. So it's very convenient for us as um, people that want to listen to the music, but it's not so great for the artists, or so they will tell you. So um, buying buying the music certainly puts more money in the artist's pocket than streaming it. 
You'll love this Apparently. from uh, you'll love this from Mary who's texted in. My dear dad was recording a Shirley Bassey song that he liked from the television because you could, couldn't you? You could walk up with yeah, your cassette recorder, put right, the microphone yeah. up to the television, and record it. In the middle of the recording, my dear mum could be heard saying, "Oh, she's got rather nice eyes, hasn't she?" <laughs> <laughs> We had the same. We had a similar thing when I was at school. We did a, a play in drama class, and it was a news at ten based kind of play. So I was given the job of recording the news at ten theme off the telly, and my cassette player was battery operated and was failing at the time. So when we came to the drama class to play it, it sounded like a comedy. You think it was just all slow and fast and everything like that. And we ended up spending the entire drama class just laughing and not actually doing anything. So good memories. Oh yeah, Johnny. Lowestoff still got his tapes. He's got Jimi Hendrix, ABBA and The Damned. That's quite a selection. It uh, is. Matt, thanks very much. Great to talk to you as always from Matt Porter, a web design.